Welcome to MLM Nation, a podcast of leaders, by leaders, for leaders, hosted by Simon Chan. He's built a team of over 200,000 and is now a full-time MLM coach and trainer. So if you're ready to level up your business, join us now. Let's do this. Hey, MLM Nation, this is Simon Chan. And in this special episode, we're going to talk about events. And the reason I talk about events is a lot of you have your company events coming up. Uh, There's also great generic network marketing training events I can recommend. I'll put them on the show notes page. But events are the lifeblood of network marketing. And I did not get this in the beginning, but once I learned more about it, my business really took off. And I shared the story about my first event with you as well. Um, Also, in the over 700 plus episodes, when I asked the question, what was your aha moment? You know, when I first started the show way back in 2015, that was like my, my the question that I always couldn't wait for, right? What was your aha moment? What was the light bulb moment that your business took off? And after eight years of doing this podcast, I'm like, that question is almost like, oh, I ask it anyway, but I know what the answer is. And 95% of the time was the answer is I went to some event, you know, I was struggling. I didn't make... I didn't make that much income, or I made a little bit of income, but then my business really took off after going to the event. So the events are where the aha moments is, where the excitement is, where the breakthroughs come at the event. So now you probably know this already. So I, I want to share with you what, how to prepare and how to really maximize the event. Because I, I've seen the profession, I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, um, that people know the importance of events, but they don't know how to fully leverage and take advantage of it. It's it's, it's becomes like a short, like a drug. You get a now. I never taken any drugs, but I guess just be drinking a cup of coffee. You get a little burst of energy, and then you crash. Right? You go to an event, you get really excited, and afterwards you go back to where you you normally were. So I don't want that to happen to you. I'm gonna give you some tips, but let me share with you. My first event was back in 2003, uh, 2004. Uh, I was in the business for a couple months, struggling. Then finally, you know, you most of you know my story. I struggled for months, never made any money because I was never consistent. And then when I finally had a mentor that pushed me, held me accountable, helped me become consistent, I started making some money, right? But it was a couple hundred dollars, wasn't much, but it was better than zero, 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 because I was doing zeros for a long, long time. Actually, I invested over $2,000 into my business before I even made one penny. But so... I started getting some, uh, making like maybe $100, $200 a month. And I was struggling. And my mentor said that there's an event coming up in San Diego. It wasn't a big annual convention, but it's a big regional event. And I had to go. And I had no money to go. And I believe at that time, I even had a free ticket to go because of the package I came in. You got like, I bought this big package, like $1,400. I got two event tickets. But I still had to, you know, get there and a hotel. And I didn't have that money. And I remember, uh, I told my mentor, and you know, it was in San Diego, which is a two hour drive down. I couldn't go. And he said, well, you better go. I, I can't afford to go. I have other things to do. I have a job. I couldn't afford to go. I don't have the money. I don't know where I'll stay. I'm definitely not driving back and forth. But he said, if you better go, or else I'll never work with you again. And he actually said that words. And at that time, he was a big part of my business. I mean, even though I was earning one, 200, he was doing, I was doing three way calls and I was getting conversions. Right. I could see like, Hey, there's hope in the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to keep bringing, you know, doing the DMO, doing the reach outs and bring people there that I would, uh, have success and eventually can quit my job and make six figures. So he said, I wasn't going to work, work with me ever again. That really hurt me. And I was like, what you, I mean, that, what would happen to my business? So that was a wake up call. And I, so I decided, uh, I was kind of, I didn't want to deal with the consequences. So I went and I went there and it was, a memorable because I broke up with my ex-girlfriend the night before. And when I broke him up the night before, um, I slept only, I was, you know, she broke up with me and I slept only like 90 minutes and uh, I still went. And I think the one of the reasons I went was, and I went on time was because I actually got two of my downlines to go. And I share with you, it's so important to get your team to attend events. You know, for every person you bring to your company convention, you're going to earn an extra thousand dollars a year. Okay. For every person you bring to your company convention, you're going to earn an extra thousand dollars a year. So if you, you want to make, uh, a million dollars, bring a thousand people. You want to bring six figures, bring a hundred team of a hundred people. You're going to make six figures. You want to make 10,000, bring but what's the math? Uh, 10 people, right? So I bought two of my downlines. I remember 
I was Letty and there was Walter. Letty lived in Torrance. I lived in Santa Monica at that time. And I drove and went down to pick up Letty. And then I drove all the way to pick up Walter, all the way on Fullerton, an hour out of my way to pick him up. So we got there and we got there in time because I picked him up early. And I remember I dropped him off. I checked in and I was so tired because it slept only 90 minutes that night that I went down to uh, the parking lot after I said, oh, all right, let's go. I'll meet you in the general session. I'm going to step out and say hi to my mentor. And so I and they went in the general session, my two downlines. So I went to say hi to my mentor. That's the first time I ever met him in person. We had just done online. I've been building online since for 19 years, since early 2004. So I met him in person. Then I just went to the parking lot for the rest of the day and slept for four or five hours. Took a four or five hour nap in there. I didn't even nap well. It was at the bottom of the uh, San Diego Convention Center, but I had slept 90 minutes. But during that event, I'll tell you, um, the thing that, I don't remember anything of the speakers. I don't even remember where I stayed that night. I think I stayed at my mentor's hotel. He let me stay there. Uh, I don't remember those details, but I do remember two things that really stood out. Number one was this guy that I really looked up to. He was making multiple six figures, okay, twenty, thirty thousand a month, and I was earning a hundred, two hundred a month. And I, I, I totally looked up to him. Now, those are my mentor who was earning at that time like a hundred, hundred fifty thousand, and then there was this guy that was earning big, big money. And and I remember seeing him talk about leadership. He was setting the example. He had a he had a, a notepad, and what he had in that notepad, there was breaks in the breaks during the session, or he would step out sometimes in the hallway, and he would just make phone calls, prospecting calls. And even on a Friday, even on a Saturday, he was prospecting, and that made a huge lasting impression on me because I re- realized that you know maybe you just make a couple calls and weekend you relax, you focus at event. You know, for him it was just like he showed up. He got some something out of it. He immediately took action and he was prospecting. He was prospecting and he showed me Simon. These are the guys who are going to be signing up. I need these signups this this weekend. And if this guy doesn't go, and he showed me a huge prospect list. And that was the first time I saw a glimpse. Now I knew about it, but like his DMO, right? He had a huge stack of leads and just going through them call after call after call. He didn't care what people think. He would just be calling through all throughout the day. Whether he's not worried about um, if the person's at work is not going to pick up or I've called him five times already. I'm not, he, he's like, I'm going to leave voicemails. I'm going to leave messages. I'm going to call. I need to get to sign up by, by, the, by the deadline. And I think when I first met him that the first day, it was on a Friday. So I got to get it by Friday. So that made a huge lasting impression. You know, this talk about leadership is about setting the example, setting that my mentor, Dan, I still keep in touch with him. Great man, really good man. Like he, he didn't say anything to me, but just watching him, what he did, that was it enough, right? So leadership is setting the example, set the example for your team. He didn't just, it's like, if you have kids, you know, they don't do what you say. They do, they do what they see you do. They saw, I saw him prospect. That's what I did. Second thing is, I think during the second day, we had lunch, lunch and a dinner. And uh, during dinner, we went to a steakhouse. Now, I don't eat red meat anymore. I haven't eaten red meat for 15 years. But back then, I did. And during the steakhouse, I remember it was like one of those, um, the place doesn't even exist anymore in San Diego. It was called the Strip, right? The Strip Steak. And you you get you get the steak and you actually get to cook yourself in the grill. And uh, I was sitting next to um, these two people, Anthony and Lynn. And Lynn, these are people that uh, we had cross line. We, our mentor connected. Again, a good networker is a connector. Okay, a good leader is a connector. He connected. We were all on, in his team, but we're cross line. We would message, instant messages, way back in the instant message each other. And um, we ca- kind of held each other accountable. They were my first accountability partners. That Because sometimes I couldn't relate to my mentor. He was making six figures. I'm making $100, $200, or even $50 a week checks, right? I make $100, $200 a month. I couldn't relate to that. But we could, I could relate to Lynn. I could relate to Anthony. Uh, Anthony was from South Carolina. Lynn was a Canadian. And we were we would just motivate each other, right? That was a really big part of keeping me consistent, staying consistent every day. So we finally met and I remember Lynn, I never really got to know her. I think this is actually maybe even before we became accountability partners. Uh, I just talked to her and I think, yeah, this is before we became accountability partners. It was after after this event that we did. So she asked me, uh, it seems like you're into fitness. What do you like to do? So I, you know, I worked out, I come from a sports background. I like to exercise. And I asked her, what do you like to do? And she said, I like to uh, ride horses. And I was like, what? Ride horses? Yeah. Uh, and he said, well, yeah, we have uh, four horses. We're stables at home. I was like, we have stables and horses? And that, that blew my mind. Because let me ask you this. Who who owns horses and have a stable? I mean, I don't know much about horses. 
Uh, I have a dog, but it takes probably a lot of money to take care of a horse. Right? Horses are expensive. So she must have a lot of money. And she's like, oh, yeah, you know what I sold? And I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. And then, of course, she brags a little bit. I had a financial service company. I sold it for I sold it for seven figures. And now I'm just retired early, but I wanted something to do. And one of the smarter things to do is network marketing. Now, that was the big game changer. I don't remember anything else in that event except for my mentor who said the who was calling the leads and that. But I think that made the biggest impression on me. Because before then, I thought only poor, broke people like me was doing network marketing. We have no choice. We're, we couldn't do other things, other businesses. We don't network marketing. And now we had a lady here who sold a business for seven figures, have enough money to retire, but she's still doing network marketing. I was like, why are you doing network marketing? And she said, well, it's a smarter thing because you have passive income. You get residual income. You work once and you get paid over and over again. Because in her business, insurance business, she built it and then she didn't get paid anymore. She had to sell it and she got paid, right? But she had to constantly work. Here's, I'm just going to do it once. I never need to make money, ne- never need to do it and again, uh, do it anymore. That was the game changer. For me, like that, before I still like, I wasn't 100% proud of network marketing. I was like, yeah, I was doing, even this, all these people say it was great, but I'm doing network marketing. You know, I'm doing a side hustle, side business. But afterwards, like, wow, a millionaire is doing network marketing. I'm in mean, the best profession. I made the right decision. And after that, the week after that, my, my belief changed so much. Uh, first of all, Lynn and I, we made a little friendly bet who hit a, a rank of silver director, which was $1,000 a week. And I beat her by one week, right? Uh, wasn't that I'm better than her or whatever. But I was just so inspired by that, that I, I could close people with confidence, right? When, so fun, some people ask me, uh, I don't know if this works. If it, that, it works. I'm telling you, people are millionaires. Someone who owns a stable is doing this business. Right? I'll be sharing with story. I'll be sharing different stories. I just was so much confident. It's all in the mind. Right? All in the mind. So at your event, let's share about a couple of things. Things that you need to work on is number one, find something. Uh, and I actually have these notes written down here. Is learn one thing about your company that builds your belief. Right? For work on the beliefs. Learn one thing about the company that builds your belief in the products. You got to work on the fundamental beliefs. A belief that builds upon the, another belief is about the network marketing profession. What's one thing that increases your belief in the profession, right? For me, that was a game changer. You know, that event, I didn't learn much about the company products. I did learn about the belief in the profession and also about the, your potential, your belief in the potential. In your, what, what's a belief in your pro- potential, right? Your belief in like making you feel like you can do it. I remember going on to seeing, seeing the awards. I see lots of people get on stage. I was like, oh my God, they're not that smart. I can do it. You know, the guy that was making, I said, 20, 30,000 a month. I was calling the leads. He, he didn't even go to college. He was like a delivery. He goes to delivery. And long story short, he actually got in trouble in an accident and got sus- license suspended. But then he does start doing network marketing. He was like a delivery boy for FedEx and like that, right? Not to offend you if you're a delivery for FedEx or UPS. But to me, I was like, they weren't like <clears throat> CEOs, entrepreneurs, superstar real estate agents. This guy was a delivery man. And he was making 20, 30,000. But he was calling the leads. He was learning the skills, right? That built my belief, right? Um, also, number five, another thing is be one successful distributor and learn what made them successful, right? For me, that one person did both. What, how he made it successful, he was relentless. He would relax on a weekend, but on, and he actually didn't work on Sundays because of his faith, but he would go relentless from Monday through Saturday. So those are a couple of things you need to work on. Now, something that really helped me out too is before you go to the event, you got to uh, have goals. Don't just go to the event. Have a goal. What's the goal that you want to have, right? And nowadays, I'll give you simple goals. Uh, when I went to my big event, I wanted to grow internationally because at that event, I had a vision. I'm going to grow internationally. I want to see, I want to go to the Latin, Latin market in Mexico. I want to grow out in Asia. So that was my goal. And my goal was to meet an American leader that was successful in expanding overseas and connect with them. And maybe we do a par- partnership together. We work together. We work cross line together. That was one of my goal. Very specific goal, right? Another goal one year was to get a, a selfie taken with all the pictures. I thought you didn't have selfies back then, but picture taken with those digital cameras with five speakers. So I could show off to my friends that I, I'm associated uh, with these type of people. These are successful people I work with. I remember one guy I really looked up to. He was a past former pastor and also a re- successful real estate investor. I heard him on the company trainings. I wanted a picture with him. And that meant a lot to me, right? Um, that inspired me. And then when I first started speaking, I actually play his CDs because our company had him on the CDs and I'll listen to them and I'll rewind them and listen to them over again and try to copy the way he spoke. And that's how I got really good at speaking. 
So that's another goal, right? A good goal for I teach a lot of my coaching members is go get a picture taken with a top leader and post, take 20 of them. And then you can share that story of that person on your social media. So a mistake that people make is take a ton of pictures and they all put it in an album and upload them all at once. But most people are not going to see that, right? Instead, you can take those pictures and post one a week. Like, for example, I took pictures, uh, speaker number one, I want to post today. Next week, um, I'll post it again. And also by doing that, you're marketing and you're making people think that you are always, and, and it's true, you're always committed to your business. Number That's number one. Um, people don't know it's last week, two weeks, it doesn't matter, right? Um, that's important. And number three, it keeps you accountable. Because a lot of times we're excited. And then two weeks later, we lose excitement, right? So by posting that picture, it reminds you of what you have to do and your commitment and your focus, okay? So that is really important. So getting goals before the event is important. And I think the last tip I'm going to share, I'm going to keep this podcast short, is you have to have an action plan after that event, okay? Action plan after that event, uh, meaning that most people are excited, but there's no immediate action plan. So they are very, very excited. And then they go home and they're overwhelmed, right? So it's not about how much you learn. It's about how much you implement. What can you implement there? So, um, and I learned this, I just learned this, reminded this past week when someone, I look up to a mentor, he said he never finishes reading a book, but he reads a book to get ideas. And once he sees an idea, he makes sure he implements on that. Is to ignite a spark and say, hey, this is what I need to do. It's not just learn, 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 learn more, learn more, learn more, read more books. It's not... We don't get paid for how much we learn. We get paid for how much we implement. So if you see something at the convention, it's like your speed of implementation that's going to determine your success. So come up with an action plan, right? Uh, and the action plan is not going to be easy because you are busy already. When you come out of that event, you have other things going on. Um, so how are you going to squeeze more things to do in your busy life to implement that one thing? So it requires, you know, I talk about the consistency system. Uh, number two component is you got to create and schedule the time. You got to create and schedule the time. Maybe it's 10 minutes a day. Like recently, I just did something 10 minutes a day just to, to do something. My, someone got me feedback. Like I, uh, my online presence is one channel. It's much, much better. What, you know, create and schedule the time, block it off to commit to that. Because if you don't, then it's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, I can go on and more stuff. I want to put some helpful links of blog posts I've written, um, accountability, doing something fun in there. And then the, the, the last part is, is the networking, right? I don't remember any, really any of the stuff at the conventions, the things I sat on, but I do remember the relationships at every event. Even the online marketing events, the generic network marketing events I've been to, my company events, I don't remember any of the trainings, but I always remember the people I meet and it's the relationships, the inspiration I got from them that, um, that makes a huge difference. I remember one time I was talking to a downline on the walk from the hotel to the link. And that's, that's the only thing I remember from that event, but made a huge impact on them, sharing with them. Another time was that uh, we went to a Brazilian steakhouse back in Utah, and I talked to someone that was a higher rank to me, and uh, he's talking to these big wakes, right? These high leaders. And he says, oh, only people who go directors and above can be on this part of the table. He, he kind of cornered and kind of jokingly laughed at me like that. And I was just like, eh, I know it was a joke, but that fired me up. Like, Next year, I'm never going to go back at the same rank. And... So I, and I never did. And two years later, I surpassed them, right? So I, and that was the thing I remember. That's the inspiration I got. So each one of these events, I remember the relationship. And by the way, I still keep in touch with that guy. He's an awesome guy. We all joke about that event at the time. But those are the things that what make the events worthwhile. It's like, you know, the saying, leadership is not taught, it is caught. The excitement is not taught, it's caught. And at these, these events, it's not the things that you learn. It's the people you meet and the excitement, the ideas you get. And then what you implement, that's going to help you become successful. So I can go on and on about it. Um, there's so many memories of events, but make sure you have to start off with the goals. What's your plan? Don't just invest money. Oh, I'm just going to get motivated. Come on, action plan. I'll give you the action plan. 20 pictures with leaders, right? 20 social media posts based on that. Come up with five action steps on what you're going to learn. Work on those beliefs. And uh, you can definitely go back and listen to it and watch this again. And that'll be helpful. All right, when I'm <clears throat> a little different background. I'm in Vancouver right now. Um, hey, I'm this. These preparing for these takes a lot of my time. I got like five blog posts in there. I'm putting the show notes page. Also took a lot of my time. These are stuff that are really popular blog posts. I want to share them with you. All I ask for you, if you're watching this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
All right, and if you're listening to this, hey, go subscribe to YouTube as well. Also, subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you're listening to it. It'll mean a lot to me because these are not free. It takes up a lot of my time. This I'm doing this on a Saturday morning, and uh, and I'm like, I think my voice is not even feeling that well, but I'm here to serve you. You might God's purpose for me is to have a positive impact. I want to serve you. But if you can leave a little review, subscribe, and share this with your teams, that would mean a lot. Anyway, thank you so much. And let me know. Hit me back up on social media. Let me know if you're, this is helpful. And so apply what you learn. Attend that next event and make sure you take action on what you shared and go out there, have a positive impact on someone's life. God bless you all.